What don't these monsters understand about the SCP Creed? Secure, contain, protect. How are they just going to ignore that middle directive there? I suppose that kind of behavior is inevitable when you're a dangerous and unpredictable creature, but still, I suppose it's best to be aware of things that escaped rather than pretend they don't exist, right? Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Top 5 Scary SCP Monsters That Breach Containment, Part 2. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more Houdini horrors. Perfect, let's begin. Coming in at number 5, we've got SCP-457, the literal embodiment of fire. Good. 457 is a sentient being composed entirely of flame. It's not a beast that can catch fire or a pre-existing fire come to life, it is fire. The actual composition is unknown, but we know that it is hot. If it's not causing massive fires and burning up all sorts of stuff, it's really hard to detect too. In fact, some claim that it is totally undetectable with current technology. That is step one to its master escape plan. Step two is reaching a point where it can be large enough to gain intelligence. See, its base form is that of a single flame around the size of a matchstick. It's possessed by a very simple directive. Burn more stuff, make bigger flames. And it does so. And when it does, it can start assuming complex shapes. One of 457's favorite forms is that of a humanoid, kind of like the human torch, but less lovable. The bigger the flame gets, the bigger its brain is, figuratively speaking. Its intelligence grows with its size and fuel sources. The flame has even been known to communicate by burning letters onto surfaces. Once it reaches a certain size, it will split off into two flames and do so as long as there's still fuel to spare. However, this is apparently very upsetting to the flame as fuel tends to be limited, so the beings will often fight one another. Beyond extinguishing other flame bodies, 457's behavior is pretty predictable. It just wants to acquire more fuel so that it can spread. There's danger hidden here though, as the gaining of intelligence can prove to be quite tricky. It has been seen learning and mimicking behaviors in order to get what it wants, and has actually managed to escape containment on different occasions. One time it damaged sprinkler systems to make a quick getaway, and it's even attempted to reason with Foundation personnel in order to be released or access more fuel. You definitely don't want 457 escaping, as it'll likely go right back to where it was discovered, causing forest fires. Smokey does not approve. Coming in at number 4, we've got SCP-3994, Normal Human People. They don't sound too normal, do they? Sounds like a bunch of rats wearing a trench coat, or code words for the lizard brains pulling the strings. And well, these are definitely not normal human people. They're extraterrestrial entities that take on human forms to learn and get what they want. When they first arrived on our planet, they did their best to fit in. The creatures themselves are unknowably gooey substances, so they develop shells that let them mimic people. A lot of their shells are less than convincing. They feature twisted appendages, severe malformations, and disproportionate skeletons. Instances of 3994 would attempt to copy speech patterns, dialects, and languages of the folks nearby. This ended up with a lot of nonsense being spewed, word salad style. It's one of my favorite phrases. However, all instances are telepathically linked, meaning that they can learn a whole lot very quickly. These days, they're largely indistinguishable from human beings. For these reasons, the Foundation encourages anyone who is in contact with a 3994 instance to teach them everything wrong. Tell them shoes are for hands, that up is down, that screaming in the library is polite. Show them books and movies with scrambled up words, and for goodness sakes, don't provide them with nonfiction. If they learn too much, they'll disappear. Then what? Well, they're already probably too smart. It's probably no surprise that they've managed to sneak a few instances out of containment under the guise of being someone else. And they'll keep doing this until they've infiltrated everything. Considering the state everything's in these days, they've probably succeeded in this mission. Coming in at number 3, we've got SCP-2662. The poor guy doesn't even want to breach containment. He'd rather just hang out, read the news, maybe play some video games. But they won't let him be. He's their lord and savior. 2662 is a cognitohazardous entity about 4 meters tall. A humanoid of sorts, this creature has arms and legs and 20 muscular hydrostats similar to cephalopod limbs sprouting from his back. It doesn't really affect one's brain until multiple exposures though. If you were in the same room with it daily, interacting with the tentacle tenant, you'll fall under his spell. The thing is, he doesn't want that to happen. Folks exposed for 6 months or so will often become very aware of his wants or needs, and will feel very compelled to fulfill them. Often they'll even get pushy in their attempts to do so. 
and that's just the beginning too. There's a secondary anomalous effect where he spontaneously generates religious followings about once per month. This involuntary act causes him a whole bucket load of stress. These zealots will focus all their energy on breaking 2662 out of containment. Containment that he voluntarily checked himself into. When the worshippers show up, they often perform various rituals that are violent and sexual in nature. How would you like it if some nude lunatics broke into your room and interrupted your alone time by bleeding on you? That's a bad time. And while the Foundation tends to execute these followers with extreme prejudice, they always come back in different forms. Even if they've never had any contact with other sects, they appear to adapt with each failed attempt. This all adds up to 2662 ending up outside of the Foundation walls quite often. Again, the poor guy. Coming in at number two, we've got SCP-3179. Liquid metal has never been this terrifying. Well, maybe some of the Terminators. And I mean, molten metal can cause a lot of damage. Okay, well we can probably agree that liquid metal is always terrifying, but this stuff especially. It's a liquid metal organism that varies in size. It can expand its mass, alter its form, and even create smaller, autonomous entities. Right now it's being contained by a damaged Cogwork orthodoxy unit, but it seems that that's gonna fail in the near future, so good luck to us. 3179 is quite intelligent for a big mass of metal and uses this brain power often. It tends to grow all sorts of different metal parts with the express purpose of breaching containment. Usually it'll expand via rod-like structures that protrude out of its body. However, it also likes to spawn little metal automatons to do its bidding. They'll often simulate organic appearances in order to trick Foundation members. These metal maniacs have been known to actually take the form of guards and researchers. 3179's escape tactics have changed over time, too. One attempt involved growing legs on its underside, and another saw its sprouting propellers to try to fly away. It's also made flying drones, and imitates the voices of people around it, and has even spawned an automaton so identical to a mobile task force member that it was almost impossible to weed out. Worst of all, it's discovered that the worshippers of Mekane believe it to be the seed of their god. Following this discovery, it sent out scripture on metal tablets, beckoning to his followers, commanding them to set him free. All of these escape attempts have proven that 3179 really doesn't care for human life in the slightest. They all end up with widespread destruction and are quite costly in terms of money and human life. My goodness. And finally, at number one, we've got SCP-682. This one's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? If I had a nickel for every time 682 breached containment, well, I'd have a lot of nickels, okay? This hard-to-kill lizard is a pain in the ass for just about everyone involved. Sometimes more than just the ass. Sure, the Foundation has managed to keep it relatively subdued through the use of terrifying corrosive acid, but it still finds a way. Just about every time another SCP causes a lick of trouble, 682 is ready to bust through the plexiglass and run rampant. Help, even introducing it to 999, the cuddliest creature going, caused a breach. It's always ready to end some lives, that's just in its nature. In fact, it escapes so often and is so dangerous while doing so, rules have been put in place to make sure that nobody goes after it unprepared. All available MTFs are sent after 682, and none are allowed to have less than 7 members. And looking at the list of breaches, most folks involved are killed in action. As we've discussed in the past, termination isn't even an option, so we've just gotta deal with breach after terrifying breach. Keep it up 682, we'll get you someday. Sheesh. Maybe the Foundation should adopt a more deadly mantra. The whole containment process seems like an expensive hit or miss exercise. Oh well, they're doing their best I suppose. What do you think of the list? Which SCP escape artist is your favorite? Do you have a preferred 682 escape story? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more snotty ones from the top 5 scary Lovecraftian villains. Cameron Carson says, Man, I haven't watched to cast a deadly spell in years. Time to find it again. A little birdie told me it's available for cheap on www.youtube.com. Or piracy. You didn't hear that from me though. Celeste Amethyst says, He discovered the Necronomicon while in Egypt. I'm surprised Dio didn't do it first. You expected Amos Hackshot, but it was me, Dio. Moonchild's Fairy Realm says, Don't be shy, put some more Lovecraft in it. See, I wanted to read it in her accent, but I don't want to mess it up. Matthew Bennett says, Who wants a society reboot? This guy. Do you have two thumbs? Because I'm confused as to who this guy is. And Gaming with Pete says, Everyone like this vid. I agree with Pete. Listen to him. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I sleep with the sirens, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more wall breaking brutes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Figuratively. Okay, by Nope. The flame has been known to... Con the flame has been even known... And, well, these are definitely not human. Whoop. They'll learn too much. Whoop. Folks exposed for six months or more will often become... Mm, 
This all adds up to six, six sweeps. Worst of all, it has this. Worst of all, it's discovered that the worship. Sure, the foundation has managed to keep. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your. All available mobile task force are sent after 682. Why can't I speak on this one?